Last weekend, while attending the Barber Motorsports Vintage Festival in Birmingham, Alabama, I uh, was cruising the swap meet area and I came upon this interesting electric trials bike. Um, I didn't recognize the brand name, so I turned around to see if I could talk to the owner to give me more information. And I wound up talking to this character about this motorcycle that he built. This is Eli Sless. So I wound up spending a few minutes talking to Eli and uh, turns out he is an actual pioneer in the EV motorcycle industry. My name's Eli Celeste. It's just one guy, it's me. Okay. And it's called Celeste Engineering. Okay. Isn't that brilliant? So I'm not necessarily an environmentalist yet. I've been building electric bikes since about 89. I'm a district garden variety motorhead. Yeah. Uh, I raced Triumphs along with this guy throughout the 70s and 80s. And I've always taken the road less traveled. Nice. <laughs> so in 89, I had a Honda Hawk. I took to Daytona and it grenaded. I came back to LA where I was living. I have worked, had a special effects company in LA. Okay. And I'd been using servos and all kinds of weird motors and stuff. So I took that Hawk and I made it electric. And it was a really nice bike that had no range at all. Let and this and this is in 89. It was an 89 NT650 RC31 Honda Hawk. Right. Nice bike, you know, single sided swing arm and a lot of the cool parts. Um, extruded aluminum frame and all that. Modern bike right. at the time. And it's still pretty modern by today's standards. Um, anyway, I converted that to electric using golf car parts. I made it so it charged in 30 minutes and it would go no more than nine miles. <laughs> nice. Yeah, <laughs> lead like, acid. Go, it, yeah, lead acid go 45 miles an hour. Right. Uh, after that, throughout the 90s, I was still in LA. I converted a bunch of electric cars. I built a lot of prototypes for what later became the Tesla. Um, I did six prototypes for a guy named Alan Cocconi at a company called AC Propulsion, which uh, Elon Musk bought the rights from him. and. That's what they're using today, pretty much. It's evolved a lot. I'll be damned. Um, that was way back in the 90s, okay. uh, building those. Right. I entered the solar and electric 500. I built two cars. Honda sponsored me on one, and uh, Trojan Battery sponsored me on the other one. In 91 and 92, we won both races both years. After that, GM, a guy that had loaned me some of the parts before, loaned me. Uh, we built a car with a quick change battery pack. And we set a world's record for the most number of miles traveled in an electric vehicle on the streets of Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. It was 1,836 miles wow. within a 24-hour period using quick change batteries. Mm -hmm. And that car ended up being a test car for the GM Impact batteries. Yeah, you know okay. And those batteries sucked. They were lead acid. They weren't yeah, that yeah, good. Yeah. But they built them. You know, they were developing it. Right. Delco Remy <laughs> and another company in Monrovia, California called Aerovironment, who Anyway, yada, yada, yada. Going on and on, getting to year 2000. Started a company called Denali Cycles. I built and sold about 65 uh, pure electric. They looked like mountain bike based, but they had no pedals. Right. They were motorcycles. They right. were 110 pound motorcycles. Right. They were pretty cool, still lead acid batteries. Right. And then after that, we developed it. another motor came out. Briggs and Stratton made a really cool motor that they were going to use for lawnmowers, and they, they never really took off for an electric motor. And I built these bikes called the Blade, and I started a company called Electric Moto, and I built about 40 of those and sold them. And then we all, during that period, I also built five electric trials bikes. And by today's standards, they suck. Right. <laughs> that, anyway, go on and on. I uh, ended up doing a lot of work for a company called Bramo, which right. is an electric bike company. Right. They actually kind of got started based on one of my prototypes. How about that? Uh, well, uh, one of the guys, they were building cars at Bramo. They right. were building a car called the Adam Ariel. Yeah. And they were building it in a building that I own. Right. I was renting them the prop, the building. And one of the guys that was working in the frame shop was my ex frame welder. <laughs> it was just he and I that was the whole, there were only two of us in the company when we were making these bikes. Right. We never had any stock investment or any of that crap. We just were just a bunch of loony motorheads. Right. Building fun stuff. Right. Um, anyway, so Brett had been riding his blade, electric moto blade, 
to Bramo's car place where they're building Adam Ariel's. And Bramster was like, he's the guy that started Bramo. He's kind of like, why aren't we building motorcycles? That's a lot easier. <laughs> so they started Bramo. Yeah, cool. It wasn't, I didn't do it. I know that was kind of an inspiration. Sure. Anyway, uh, fast forward a couple of years, I did a lot of prototyping for Bramo. I made a lot of their prototype parts. They had their own engineers. They'd, they they wouldn't, I didn't really design things for them. They'd design stuff and say, hey, we need somebody to build it. And I was a fabricator. Uh-huh. And then hey, uh, I, did, I ended up doing quite a bit of fab work for them over the next years. So getting into the 2010, 20, up to 2015. Uh-huh. Doing a lot of work for Bramo, making, uh, built the, designed and built the chassis. They built a bike that ran the Isle of Man in 2016. That was my frame. I designed and built it. Okay. Um, they did all the battery and motor stuff in that one. Um, and we finished second behind the Mugen Honda. Nice. Uh, we Our trap speed at the end of the doing the, the Isle of Man loop was 160 something miles an hour at, at the end of it. They had a speed trap. Yeah. And we averaged 118 miles an hour. Who's your rider? Um, he's not alive right now. Our rider was William Dunlop. But William was just the nicest guy in the world. And I don't know exactly what happened, but he, was, he died in a wreck. Yeah, yeah. I believe in Ireland. Might have been in the UK. He was our rider, but he's a great rider. Anyway. And their dad, too. Pardon me? Their dad died. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Fast forward a little more. Uh, Bramo got bought by... Back then, the bike that we raced in 2016 was a victory. Uh-huh. Polaris had bought Bramo. Oh, yeah. I make stuff. That's what I do. I hear you. Um, then I built this trials bike. I copied a... I, I bought an old Gas Gas, kind of a Beater 200 Gas Gas TXT. Uh-huh. And I wanted to get the geometry right. Right. The bikes, the trials bikes we built 10 years prior, 15 years prior, they were just, we made up all of our numbers and they weren't that good. Uh-huh. Um, this bike I based it on, a, I got all the geometry off the gas gas, made a background sketch and then I designed the bike in SolidWorks, made a 3D model of all the frame tubes and everything else based on their geometry. But, a couple more horsepower. And this is my frame design, <laughs> it's very close to the gas gas, but, and I copied a lot of it. Yeah. But it's still mine. It's not their frame. I made the frame. Right. And I made the swing arm, and I made the brake rotors, and I made the battery, and I vacuum formed all the plastic parts myself. Wow. All the tools I made on a vacuum form machine I made. Nice. I'm not quite John Britton, but I'm. I like. Still, it's impressive. Build build your own motorcycle is impressive. And by the way, speaking of John Britton. Yeah. First year, John Britton bought his motorcycle to the U.S. He couldn't get it running. Yeah. I loaned him the fuel injection off of my Duconda nice. that I had built for the first, it wasn't Battle of the Twins then, what was it called? Um, it became a kind of a big deal. There was one year at Daytona where there was a Quantel Cosworth, a Commonwealth RS750 Honda, um, who else was it? Britain, uh-huh. um, and a bunch of others. It was really cool. There were all these crazy things that all these different companies had made. Dr. John's, Moto Guzzi, um, Anyway, I, I made the Duconda. I had a friend that used to work at HRC uh-huh. named Homer Knapp. Uh-huh. And Homer talked me into building this thing. And we built it, and it ran incredibly fast at Daytona that year. And then it grenaded all over the place. Wow. With uh, Kevin Arian, who was running the Honda race team, and later on went to run Honda racing. Kevin was riding it when he did it, so I blamed it on him. Right. Nice. I didn't blame it on the titanium rods that I made. That, <laughs> didn't stay round at 10 grand. That's a different story. <laughs> Not an engineering thing. It's an it's a operator error. Homer talked me into making the rods. Okay. I wouldn't have done it because I'd never seen titanium. And he's right. my neighbor then. And I was like, oh, yeah, we can do this. And like, okay, let's do it. <laughs> so we did it. <laughs> they, look, they look good. They just when they get hot. They deform a little bit. Uh-huh. And a connecting rod, if it deforms a thousand, <laughs> usually blows up your motor. That's right. It expands, doesn't it? It expands. Well, they, a lot more than they, steel is. They span <laughs> symmetrically, you're okay. I'm yeah. not sure this is what happened. This is what we really suspect. Also, because we we're trying to get ready for Daytona. Right. We started in January for March Daytona, making connecting rods for a motor that never been built before. Right. I got a Ducati Alizura bottom end, put four pounds of welding rod on it, and bored it out to fit some Honda RS, uh, not RS, but XR600 barrels. Uh-huh. Um, so it would be a over 100 millimeter bore, and it's going to be a thousand cc Ducati killer. That huh. was the goal. They yeah, hadn't yeah, come yeah. out with their 851 yet. Uh-huh. And uh, no, they hadn't had an 851, I think. No, they didn't. I can't remember. My brain's done. Anyway, 
and ended up with Carrillo rods like everything does and motors that you build. Yeah. Anyway, um, the titanium we got, we couldn't get the right titanium in time, so Homer talked to guys and they'd give us some titanium that the grain was flat instead of vertical. It's kind of like the grain boundaries for when they extrude or when they forged the original titanium. Right. Um, so we, it was kind of like made 90 degrees from what the material should have been for right, strength. Right. So the grain didn't run parallel to the load path of the rod. So, right. And I think that had something to do with it. Okay. But anyway, I'm uh, digressing. That's all right. About I like years, stories. About 10 years. I like stories, so that's good. Okay, so anyway, so later on, we're back to 2015, 2016. Bramo gets bought by Polaris. It becomes victory. We go to the Isle of Man. We kick butt for everybody except for Honda. And uh, it, was, it was a win. Yeah. We were second place on the podium. <laughs> I also built another bike for the Isle of Man in 2009, another electric bike. The first year they did it, and it podiumed also. We were first on the podium in there were two classes. Right. Honda won one. We won, I won the other one. It was me and two, another, one other guy. I built the whole thing. I designed uh -huh. the whole bike, built the frame, built the batteries, installed the motor, wired it. Made all the plastic parts, and it did okay. The battery did grenade at the very end of the race, but nobody knew it. Ah, <laughs> so it was off camera. Yeah, yeah. That was like 2009. Hey. Anyway, huh. I keep digressing. Um, about a year and a half ago, the guy that was the head designer at at, at Bramo went to Zero Motorcycles, where he's working now. And, but he had a bunch of really cool parts left over from when we were doing Bramo stuff. Like Olin's forks and shocks, like right. Oz wheels, right. like really good con motor controllers, and some other goodies. Motec, uh -huh. uh, 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 that acquisition, and some other stuff like that. So he had all those goodies that he kind of took with him. He didn't steal them. He, they was on good terms, but he ended up with a lot of the race parts that they weren't going to use anymore. Right. And I ended up buying a whole bunch of their reject batteries, lithium-ion battery cells, um, that, that were actually pretty good cells, but they wouldn't quite pass QC. Uh -huh. They had very tight QC tolerance on the batteries, and I don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I ended up with a bunch of them. Yeah. And uh, about a year and a half ago, actually it was in, it was in a New Year's Eve, not this past one, but so that would be a, a year and three quarters ago, not this past New Year's, the one before that, whatever year that was, um, Brian and I decided to build a bike. And this is Brian? No, Brian's a young guy. Uh, I say young guy, he's in his mid-30s. He's a design director at Zero, and he's uh, really good with electric stuff. He's responsible for a lot of what's happened to Bramo and a lot of what's happened to Zero. Yeah. Um, he had all these cool parts. So I started designing up a frame. Uh, designed up a frame. Designed a gearbox, or just a reduction gearbox. It's not a multi-speed. Right. It's one speed of reduction gearing. In a motorcycle, you call it primary reduction. Right. Typically, on a motorcycle, from a crankshaft to clutch, usually about a three-to-one ratio. Uh -huh. I designed a for our motor that we were using, electric motor. Um, I got Parker Motors to provide the rotor of the motor of one of their big motors, and I cut it down about three inches. I hollowed the, the motor shaft out. I threaded the ends of it and did a bunch of other things to make it motorcycle size. Right. Because their stuff is industrial. Right. But it's a really cool motor. It's water cooled. Uh -huh. um, a lot of really cool stuff in it. So I made the, the rotor up, shipped it back to Parker. They pressed the magnets on, high speed balance it, sent it back. They also sent me the stator of the motor, which I also took three inches off the width of. Made the end plates and made a reduction gearbox that comes off of the drive a jack shaft that goes over to a counter shaft and I basically, like on this bike I copied a Gas Gas Trials bike. On their bike I copied an R1 Yamaha. I, basically I, every bit of geometry from the position of the lower triple clamp to the position of the counter shaft relative to the swing arm pivot. I didn't copy the seat position, any, any of the ergonomics, but all the critical geometry right. was off an R1. Right. And I made a background sketch in SolidWorks, okay. just a 2D sketch. And then I leave that sketch in the background and I modeled this whole new frame and everything nice. um, over that. For about six months I worked on that, designing the, the, the motor, the battery, and the chassis. About halfway through, I guess that would have been 2018, 2017. I'm really bad with years. Yeah, yeah. 
halfway through. I mean, designed it for half a year and built it for the other half of the year. I started, I got a CNC machine, I got a tubing bender, I got a Healy Arc welder, I got a MIG welder, I got all kinds of tools. Right. Um, so I made all that stuff. And I finished it at the start of this year. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Um, right around January, the first week in January, I rode the bike. All right. And it kind of scared the crap out of me. I've raced a lot in my life. Yeah. Um, but it was making about 120, 130 horsepower. I was used to 70 horsepower things. Ducatis, Triumphs, BMWs, Guzis. I, he, he rode the bike here today. We won the Formula uh, Formula Lightning class um, and the Formula Lightning Extreme by about half a lap. Okay. He's a good rider. He's, he was doing 133 was his best time out there. He's pretty good for an electric. Yeah. Um, the, the next fastest electric is 10 seconds behind us. Okay. There's only four electric, five electrics there. It's not like the fun one, but he also he, he was in, he almost finished seventh running in the pro race with these guys. It's an invitational race where they pay money. Right. And so Scott Russell was first. Uh, uh, Steve Rapp is in it. They're first and second. Those guys are they're both. Pro riders forever and done Daytona and everything else. They're some of the best riders in the country. Yep. So uh, Troy uh, Siahan, our rider, he he ran seventh for the whole race. Right towards the end, one guy got past him and he got knocked back to eighth. He's on the final lap, the second flag lap, and it's the old story where you get the ten cent fuse that blows on the DC to DC converter, which nobody knows what that is. But anyway, it's just a little electronic thing, a little tiny fuse that you've seen in your car stereo. Right. Um, one of those blew. It was a slow blow fuse, and it took it. It was a nine lap race. It blew in halfway through lap eight and a half. Wow. <laughs> so it's an easy fix. I'll put an automotive fuse in it. And Maybe a 10 amp fuse. This is a 6.25 amp fuse because it's a high voltage system. Right. They're kind of critical about the, the current. But the fact is, if you're racing and you're using fuses, you're probably an idiot anyway. Who <laughs> wants a fuse in a race bike? It's like, oh, good. I, you I, saved you know, your wiring. I was happy because a fuse did something good for him. Yeah, yeah. You know, it just doesn't do that. <laughs> right. Anyway, that's the story. I'm an electric bike geek. That's I'm great, damn man. You're legendary. <laughs> Beautiful. Hey, get one of these downers. I didn't want to get in trouble. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> you take that SRF, you go 100 miles on either one of them. I'm not sure exactly how. Everybody goes, what's the range? What's the range? What's the range? Whatever. I'm saying if you go for a good, long, aggressive motorcycle ride on the two bikes, you'll come back and buy that zero. Oh, I want, I it. I want one now. Freaking honk.